Hi, this is Jeremy Moskowitz, founder and CTO for Netrix Policy Pack, and in this video, we're going to talk about the new Windows 11 admin protection. Uh, now, I'm using a pre release version, but chances are it's not going to change by the time you watch this or in the future, but hey, who knows? It could. Long story short, what is admin protection all about first? It's basically there if you insist on running with the scissors with local admin rights all the time. You insist on running with local admin rights, and maybe, maybe we can put a, like a little safety net on the scissors so that if you if you trip and fall, at least you won't stab yourself to death on the way down the stairs. Okay, that is my analogy for what this uh, what this is going to do for us. So what this tool isn't trying to do is to help give you back local admin rights to users who you've already removed it from. Remember, if you're an admin on the box, you can still do whatever the heck you want. Uninstall software, kill services, install malware. You can do all sorts of mean, nasty stuff. So the goal, of course, is still to remove local admin rights from your users and then use a tool like a policy pack, least privilege manager, to grant using rules and tools the things they need to run the applications. So like developers or standard users can run these applications that throw UAC prompts. Don't get caught in the trap. Don't think this tool magically enables you to give local admin rights back to users because that would be a fool's errand because then they could do whatever the heck they want on that machine, including blow it up. So without further ado, but let's go ahead and take it by the numbers. So here I am in this on this machine, just to show you if I go to um, who am I slash all, okay? Who am I? I am somebody named win 11 computer slash admin. That's the name. And he, he is an admin. And I know this because he's in the built-in administrators group, regular standard admin. Okay. A real admin. Now, when you run applications as an admin, uh, you'll, you know, this, when you double click stuff, you get user account control. You can show more details. You can see what's going on here, but there's no reprompting for credentials again. Okay. Again, I'm pointing out user account control on purpose for a second for, for the, the second part of the demo. When I click on yes, boom, you're able to perform that privileged operation. So anything with the UA, most things with the UAC prompt uh, or that require admin rights, the UAC prompts are going to present in that way. So another tool might be like Procmon. This Procmon tool requires admin rights. I want to run it. I get a user account control. I say yes, and then boom, I'm performing the operation. Now what's really happening there, of course, is that if I were to double click on PowerPoint Viewer again, and just, just leave it there for a second. I have another tool that I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm sorry, let's do that one more time. I have another tool that I want to show you that's kind of showing what's going on underneath the hood. Of course, you know what it is. That is going to be Process Explorer. So Process Explorer, I already had running to kind of get me going with this demo. If I were to take this and target this window, it's going to zip zip over here to PowerPoint Viewer. And if I double click on here, let's just prove that I really am who I say I am. If I go to image, you can see the user is win11 uh, computer slash admin. That's exactly who I said I was. Like nothing fancy here. This is the standard behavior. In order to turn on admin protection, you actually have to, to kind of go through some hoops and I'm going to go through those hoops in just a minute. So let's go ahead and uh, turn this, uh, go ahead and turn it on and let's see the difference here. So I'm going to go ahead and click next uh, or cancel rather. Go ahead and close this out. Now, the first thing to note is that in order to do this, this, the setup for this is not in an ADMX file. So let me say that again. There is no amount of gyrations that you can do with an ADMX uh, set from download, uh, download set from Microsoft. It's going to turn this thing on. So in order to turn it on, you still do use group policy or you can use Intune. I'll put up a screenshot here uh, for how you do that in Intune. Um, but moving beyond Intune, to do it in group policy land, if you go to gpedit.msc here locally on the box, this is the local group policy editor here, okay? It exists uh, baked into the group policy editor. So it's going to be in Windows settings, which is not admin templates. So the only machines that are going to have this setting are going to be this, as of this recording, the insider preview or sometime later where this thing gets updated. So uh, I'll show you the trick on how to put this into a real GPO a little later, but the basic gist, if you want to experiment with it like I'm doing, you got to go to security settings, local policy, security options, okay? And down here in security options is all the user account control things. And uh, several of these aren't going to be there when uh, you're, you know, you're not using this latest build. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on configure type of admin approval mode, and you can see it's set to legacy admin approval mode, and I'm going to select admin approval mode with admin protection, 
and then click OK and reboot the machine. I've already done this to make things go faster, okay? I've already got this in another snapshot. So I'm just gonna go to my snapshot manager here. All right, and we're back. So again, I've got everything turned on. If I were to go to who am I slash all again, let's just go ahead and take a look just to show you that I'm really the same person and all that. All right, and all the same stuff you saw earlier. So really no, no change, same guy, now different behavior. So I've already got PowerPoint Viewer running here, and I'm going to do that same little magic trick using Process Explorer. And if I were to target the window here and go back to PowerPoint Viewer here, take a look. Now you can see that there's a special kind of fakey fake user actually performing this. So you know it's the same guy, but you can see it's actually a different perspective. So that's what's really happening. But what I didn't show you is launching PowerPoint Viewer and how the actual um, uh, like display of what's going on is actually a little bit different. Well, let's go back to PowerPoint Viewer and let's see the, uh, the actual differential here. Notice it doesn't say user account control. It just says Windows security, okay? So you, if you look at more details here, there's actually not a lot. It just kind of tells you what you're going to do. And now you can either allow changes or don't allow, but it's not user account control. It's this sort of sneaky Pete secondary admin that you're actually allowing changes from. So once you run that here, okay, if we take a look once again at what's going on here, and we go to PowerPoint Viewer. Again, what we see is that it's not you who's doing it, it's sort of like a proxy or a broker performing this operation. It's kind of making it so that you can run with the scissors for this one application, but if this one application tries to be super naughty and grab all sorts of stuff going backward into the machine, like um, you know the data, you know databases of the SAM or tokens or anything else that would be highly privileged information here that, whoops, I guess that, Zapped. Let's try that one more time. Uh, any of those things that are privileged, it really can't go backward and do those and get and get those details uh, and use them against you. So this process can be naughty. Oh yeah, this thing can blow your whole freaking face off uh, if that's what you said you were saying yes to. But this process can't then take those details and shove them into another process later. Once this process is done and dusted and dies, that's it. That's where it locks up. So my friend Rudy Ooms, uh, who is uh, Mr. MDM, has an incredible blog on this. I will put that here, uh, that URL here, and put it also in the notes. You should definitely read in excruciating detail um, how it works and what it does and what its extra goals are. But I hope this kind of gives like a first first part of the lash up. Now I did promise a couple more things that I wanted to show. One of the things I wanted to talk about is I'm going to go back to my snapshot. Manager, and I want to show you what it looks like if you're locking on as a domain admin, okay? Because that's actually probably the a case that you probably have to deal with a lot. So let me go ahead and just wait for this to catch up. Uh, okay, so now I'm a totally different guy, okay? So I'm logged in here as uh, my domain administrator, whose name is A. That's right, it's Fabricam A. So let me go ahead and go to command prompt and just show you who I am. If I go who am I slash all, now you can see I'm Fabricam uh, A. So in other words, this is a domain account, not a local account, but because this domain account is a domain admin, that means by default he's also a member of the administrators group. So long story short, same rules apply. So that person has um, launched PowerPoint. I've got um, Process Explorer showing the the details inside and you can see it's not a it's admin underscore a it's that sneaky Pete admin so the idea is that if this process goes nuclear it can't actually go backward grab the remainder of the credential set and kind of use that against you in some other fashion now I wanted to wrap up this video uh, similar to how I started it by turning on group policy but I wanted to do it for the entire domain or a subset of your computers or whatever but what I wanted to point, well, honestly, I couldn't. And the reason why is that this machine, this insider build that I have, if I do gpmc.msc, uh, it won't let me run it. I can't install the RSAT tools. Uh, I'm hitting a brick wall. I've tried three different ways to get the RSAT tools with the GPMC going, uh, and I can't. But I want to give you at least the advice on how to know you're on the right track. So again, this machine, if you run gpmc, 
edit.msc. That's the local group policy editor. Now, if you go down to Windows settings, security settings, local policy, security options, remember, these aren't ADMX settings. ADMX settings are, are lower down here in admin templates. So there's no gyration of ADMX settings going to get you what you want here. In fact, if you look here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 different user account control settings. The one that we turned on earlier, which is the configure type of admin approval mode. We take a look at that guy that we did earlier. And we go to a machine that you probably have on your network. This happens to be a server 2022 machine, or it's a Windows 10 machine, or maybe it's a, a not quite yet up to date Windows 11 machine. If you look at the same settings in a real GPO, at a domain-based GPO, admin protection demo GPO that I've created here, I don't have 12, I have one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Aha! So you can see they're different. So you're going to have to wait for your management console to be updated somehow through the Microsoft machinery in order to get all the things you need. But how do you know you're on the right track? Well, honestly, there is no one path yet to know, but the idea is that at some point this will be updated. When you click edit inside the GP editor, you'll see the settings you're looking for. So if you're hunting and pecking around looking for that setting, you're like, freaking, I can't find where that setting is, and you're losing your mind. Remember, you can you're looking for the right setting, but you might not have the right management machine. Once you put the GPMC on that machine, aha, then you as the admin can go in and create domain-based group policy objects. That group policy uh, will then call the local group policy editor, give you all the things you need under user account control, and you're off to the races. Because remember, no set of ADMX settings is going to get you what you need in order to meet the goal here. I hope this gets you on the right road to investigating admin protection. But remember, this is not a panacea. It does not get you out of jail. And you should not be letting your users run with the scissors all the time. Because remember, they can still do whatever they want as an admin. They can blow up the system and just do all sorts of naughty stuff. Again, this tool or this function's job in Windows is to make it so that if you're running one process and that process is naughty, when that process is over, the naughtiness stops there, okay? It's a protection mechanism, like a backwash protection system so that you can't get junk all over yourself uh, or, or worse, okay? Hope this video helps you get oriented to this uh, piece of the puzzle. Looking forward to getting you started with this, or if you need a tool to help you get out of the local admin rights business permanently, like Netrix Policy Pack, we are here for you. Thanks so much and talk to you soon.